Father, we thank you because we have a message to tell on the mountains. Lord, today as we open your word once again, let your Holy Spirit bless us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight, dear Lord. As, we, as your word says in Psalm 81 and verse 10, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Lord, allow us to open our mouth. May you fill it with your words of inspiration, words of courage, words of wisdom, words that we need to know to hear, to know your will in our lives. So bless us now, Lord. Bless your church. And give us wisdom as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, if, as we continue our series, The Stars of Bethlehem, we saw Mary, when the angel came to her and told her she was going to have a child, son of God, how she accepted that challenge how she accepted the invitation she accepted the call of the angel that she was the chosen one she was a favored one of God and then we saw Joseph on the other hand even though he heard it from her and he was making plans to solve the situation on his own when the angel finally told him don't worry Joseph this is God's plan you don't have to run from this you don't have to to, to do anything, God has actually chose Mary and he's chosen you and, and everything else. Joseph then decided to follow the plan that God had ordained for them. So it happened that the baby was born and we go to Matthew chapter 2. And today I will entitle this message, Follow the Star. Follow the what? The Star. Matthew chapter 2 gives us the story of something that has many great lessons for us. You know, this, this week I, I saw a story in, in, a, in, a, in a news, I don't even remember where I saw it, of a little boy, not sure if it was in Texas or in California, one of those places. He was probably six or seven years old, and he had a birthday. And uh, he decided to invite his classmates to his birthday. So his mother uh, took him to a restaurant, one of those pizza places, because there was a pizza. And she took a photo of the supposedly celebration. I think this was on, 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 on one of the social medias, actually. You might have saw it, seen it. And the picture was the little boy by himself in his birthday party because no one showed up. So she took a photo and put it on social media because she, he invited all of his classmates, but for some reason, no one showed up and it was considered uh, an act of bullying. But since it was put on social media, instead of it being a terrible thing for him, it actually turned out good because a very, well, a, a, a basketball team invited him to their basketball game and they actually ended up celebrating his birthday in a basketball team and, 
And it, it became a, a beautiful celebration after all, even though initially no one, no one showed up. This story also gives us the picture of a great celebration, what should have been a great celebration and no one shows up. So it, it, it starts by saying, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1 says, now af sorry, verse 1, it says, Now after Jesus was born, where? Where? Don't miss that. I'm coming back to that. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from where? The east came to Jerusalem. Now, I want to I explain a couple of things before we actually go in the application of this message today. First of all, I want you to re realize that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But the wise men went where? Where did wise men go? Don't miss that. The party is where? In Bethlehem. But the wise men end up where? Don't miss that, church. I want you to bear that in mind because that, this, is the, this is the heart of the message today, okay? The party was in Bethlehem, but the wise men end up where? Jerusalem. But before we go there, there are a couple of things that I want you to realize. Number one, it was in the days of King Herod. Herod was the king. Now, I want you to know, Herod was king of, the, of, the, of Judea. He was the king of the Jews. He was the king of the, of the people of God. Now, Herod was not supposed to be any king because he was not from the royal lineage of David. He did not come from the blood of David. Are you with me? Herod was an Edomite. And he was a Gentile, and he had become king by, by force, by killing others and getting people out of his way. And he, he basically became king because Rome favored him. He should not be, had been king. He was actually hated by the Jewish nation of having a king that had actually stolen his way in there. He had usurped his way in there. He was there because of his own efforts, not because of his royal lineage. So let's bear that in mind. The only ones that were supposed to be kings had to come from the, from the descendants of David. But King Herod was not a descendant of David. First thing. Second thing is that these wise men, who were they? The Desire of Ages says that they were philosophers. But uh, the actual Greek mentions them as magos in Spanish. We use the word mago, as you would use the word in English, magi, which are actually considered um, astrologers, okay? But in, in reality, they were, they were philosophers. Now, the Desire of Ages puts it this way, and it says that the, the wise men of the East were philosophers. They belonged to a large and influential class that included men of noble birth. And they compromised much of the wealth and learning of their nation. Among these were many who imposed on the credul credulity of the people. Others were upright men who studied the indications of providence and nature and who were honored for, for their integrity and wisdom. These wise men were a good group of people with integrity. So what I'm saying is that in that group of philosophers, there were some that were corrupt and there were some that were really good. These were considered the good guys. Now, the wise men had seen a mysterious light, and I come to that in a minute. So I just want you to know who these people were, and apparently they were also guys that gave counsel to the kings. So the Bible says that these men came from the east and they came to Jerusalem. I want you to know that there was a long distance from where they came to where, they, where Jerusalem was. Apparently, they lived somewhere in, in, in Babylon area, in Palestine area. So 
Apparently, I was, I, was, I was looking, researching this, and apparently it would have been some 900 miles that they would have walked or gone on, on, a, on a donkey or, or on a camel as, as they painted in pictures. It would have taken them 900 miles or approximately 1,448 kilometers. Are you with me? So I'm just establishing what's happening here. It says that Jesus is born where? Bethlehem, but they get, end up in Jerusalem. Now, verse 2 ex gives us a little more explanation. It says, And they said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen what? We have seen his star in the east and have come to do what? To worship him. I, 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 love this, I love this verse because what this is telling us here now, that these guys, these, these wise men, I almost said three. By the way, the Bible doesn't say there were three or four or five, right? We don't know how many were there. We, knew, we know it would have probably been more than two. And people think it was three because they brought three different kinds of gifts. But the Bible doesn't say how many were there and it doesn't even give the name of them. Tradition gives us a couple of names that may have been, but we don't really know how many were there. What we do know is that they followed a star to go and find the new king. Now, the question is, how did they know about this star? See, they were also astrologers. They studied the stars, but there was also a prophecy in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that they would have read that came from a, a, a strange incident that happened in Numbers 24. You've ever heard about the prophet Balaam? Anybody heard about prophet Balaam? The guy that a donkey spoke to him? Remember that story? So Balaam, uh, King Balak, wanted Balaam to go and curse the Israelites. Remember that? And when he opened his mouth to curse God's people, what happened? What happened? Are you with me? He blessed them. So in one of those blessings that he gave to God's people, he actually prophesied that the Messiah was going to be, when the Messiah came, it was going to be a star coming out of Jacob, out of Israel, a scepter. So these philosophers had seen this prophecy and they, they were waiting for this to happen. They studied the stars in search of, that, of this, this famous star that had been predicted by, by, by Balaam. As a matter of fact, it is believed that Balaam was actually from one of these guys from their area. So they were waiting, they were anticipating, they were searching, they were looking, they were investigating when this star would pop up. Are you with me, church? So the, 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 the wise men from the east, though they were not living in Judea, they were not of the, considered the people of God, they were men that really were searching and waiting for the coming of the ruler that had been prophesied many years back. So now, it says that they, had, they saw the star. I was reading about this in a book called the Desire of Ages, if, if you've heard about it, if you read it. And here's what it says. It says, the, the wise men had seen a mysterious light in the heavens upon the night when the glory of God flooded the hills of Bethlehem. So you know that night when Jesus was born? You know the Bible says that there were angels that, that were singing around there. Remember that story? It says that these guys, even though they were approximately 900 miles away from where Jesus was born, they actually saw light. But that light was angels that were singing. But that light, it says, faded away, and a luminous star appeared and lingered in the sky. It was not a fixed star, nor a planet. And the phenomenon excited the keenest interest. So they were like, hey, wait, may, hey, maybe this is the star that we've been looking for. And they, 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 they kept studying and, 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 and then they came to the realization and they, 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 they decided, they concluded that this is the star that they were waiting for. That star was a distant company of singing angels. But of this, the wise men were ignorant. In other words, they didn't really know what the star was. The star was angels singing, but for them it was just a, an interesting 
light that was up there, different than the stars and different than the planet. It was not a star. It was not a planet. What was it? So they decided this is the star that we've been waiting for because in, in Numbers 24, 7, it says, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. So they packed their stuff, and they decided to go and follow the star. Now, the interesting thing is where this star took these guys. Verse 3. Verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was what? He was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. You know, I, 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 when, I was, when I was studying this, I was... Why, this is crazy, right? Because these guys are a thousand plus kilometers away from the birth of Jesus. And they were able to see it. When the people of God that were right there should have seen this, should have known about this, should have been excited about it, they were not. Now, when these guys got to Jerusalem, the star, guided by the star, by the way, they would, they would travel by night because at night they could see the star. So by night they would travel following the star. When they got to Jerusalem, coming down on Mount Olivet, the star took them and stopped right on top of the temple. Where? Right on the temple. So they said in their mind, well, you know what? This is where the child is because this is where the star has brought us to. They go to the temple now. They're excited. They're, they, they have all kinds of expectations because you know what? This is where the newborn king is. But something interesting happened. In the temple, no one knew anything about it. No one was excited about it. No one cared about it. No one remembered there was a prophecy about it. You know, these guys followed the star just like Abraham followed the word of God. When God said to Abraham, Abraham, go to a place that I'm going to show you. Abraham went without knowing where he was going. These wise men followed the star just like the Israelite followed the, the, the cloud that would move or stop and guiding them all through the desert. These wise men followed the star because they knew that there was something about the star. When the star stopped in the temple, they go into the temple, they're expecting to see an excitement, and there's nothing. The priests know nothing about it. The people know nothing about it. Everything is quiet. They're expecting that there's some celebration, but there's no celebration. They expected that everyone should know about this great event, but no one knows anything. They expected to find people prepared for the coming of the king, but no one was ready. They expected to be welcomed by all those who were like them, waiting for the king, but no one welcomed them. They came to the party alone. There is nobody celebrating. So they go to the temple. Herod heard that these guys were asking about the newborn king. Herod is troubled because he realizes that this king was going to be the next king in line, and this king was going to probably take his place because he was not supposed to be there. So the Bible says he was troubled, and all Jerusalem was troubled as well. Verse 4, it says, And when he had gathered all the men together, all the priests and scribes together, he inquired of them, where the king was born. And then that's when they go and they studied. Verse 5. So they said to him, In Bethlehem or Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And they looked and they searched and they found out that the prophecy said that the child was going to be born in Bethlehem. And yes, the prophecy was real. But you know, there is something that, that is interesting here because a few days before, or a few weeks before, maybe a few months before, there had been an announcement of a few shepherds that had been out in the field and came in and talked about some, something that had happened, some angels that they had saw in the field. So the priests 
would have heard about something, but they paid it no mind. They just brushed it off. They said, ah, if God is going to say something, he's going to say it to us. I don't think he's going he's to pass us by and go and talk to shepherds. The same thing is happening now. These priests and, and the scribes are saying, wait a minute. Who are these? Who are these guys? Gentiles? Why would God go 900 miles away from us to tell people instead of telling us that his son is being born? Are you with me? So for them, this was an embarrassing situation. I mean, we are the leaders. We are the church leaders. How is God not going to speak to us and tell us that he is sending his son? Why wouldn't he do that? They were really upset. Their, their pride would not allow them to accept the fact that God was actually calling their attention to the, for, to the coming of his son. So, so they, they, were, they were being indifferent about it, and it, it really got Herod mad because he's now thinking, you know what, these guys are ignoring me. Maybe they're planning something with this little newborn baby, and they're going to probably take, up, take, off my throne, take away my throne, and, and he got angry at them. So they found that the, the prophecy, when he, when he really came down on them, they found that the, 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 the king was going to be born in Bethlehem, verse, verse 6. And this is the prophecy, right? It says, But you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are not least among the rulers of Judah, for, you, for out of you shall come a what? A ruler who will shepherd my people. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, he determined from then what time the star appeared. And verse 8. And then he sent them to where? To Bethlehem and said, Go search carefully for, your, for the young child. And when you have found him... Bring back word to me that I may come and worship. That he was just, you know, just trying to set a trap for them to tell him where Jesus was and he was going to kill him because he wanted to get rid of him because he knew it was a threat to his kingdom. Okay? Verse 9. And, and here's where I want, to, I, want, I want to stop a bit. So when they heard the king, they departed and behold what? What happens? A star, behold, a star which they had seen in the east did what? Went before them till, they, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they did what? They rejoiced greatly. Now let me, let me, let me go back here and make a, a beautiful application with this. When they followed the star, Robert... Where did the star take them? No. It took them where? To Jerusalem. Why would the star take them to Jerusalem if Jesus wasn't there? Why didn't the star just take them to Bethlehem once and for all? Instead, Jerusalem. It's a detour. I mean, why the extra work? You know, these, these, these wise men came all the way from hundreds of miles away, took them, a pro probably would have taken them three, four months, the distance, but they thought it was worth it to go and worship the king. And I, I, when I, I was reading this, right, and I think, you know, would we walk 900 miles to go and worship the Lord? <laughs> like, what? Hey, I'm going to get up and go, I'm going to walk even 10 miles to go to church to worship God. Would we do that? You know, these guys, 900 miles approximately. I'm just using a number. It could be more. It could be less. It was a long walk, that's for sure, or a long journey. But they decided, I am going to go because we've been waiting for this. We've been studying. We've been anticipating. We've been preparing for this. And now is the time. We cannot miss it. They followed the star no matter the sacrifice that it took them to get to where that star was taking them. Amen? And I ask you today, are, are, are you following a star? Does that star take you through a, route, a road that is very uncomfortable? Does that star take you to a road that is, that is painful? 
that is tiring, a road that is, that is sometimes embarrassing, a road that is, that is uncomfortable, that, that you, you don't have all the comfort that you would like to have, but you're following that star because it is God's plan for your life. These guys made sure we, we can't stop. I, I, I would think maybe on the road, hey, guys, you sure we're doing the right thing? Hey, hey um, why don't we turn back? You know, there could have been some discouragement on the road, but, but they encouraged each other. The, the Zarf Ages says they continued um, bringing promises to themselves. They continued encouraging themselves with the word of God and the prophecy. And they kept going until the star brought them to Jerusalem, to the temple. Now I'm saying to you, God took them to the temple, number one, because he wanted to wake his people up. Now think about it. He brought people from miles away to come and wake up his people in church. Because they knew nothing what was going on. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God in body had just been born in Bethlehem and the temple has nothing to say about it. Church leaders totally ignore it. Church members, if the leaders don't say anything, I don't care. So the temple itself knew nothing. God wanted to bring the message to the temple. When these guys came there, the excitement started coming around. Even if they were mad, they were upset, they were excited. Something was happening. People were being taught that the king had been born. But he wasn't there. But he wasn't there. So when they left the temple, when they left the temple... It was like a change of plan. God shifted the plan, and now he's taking them to Bethlehem. And what it says here, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Because now they see, hey, there it is again. And now the star is taking them another step into where Jesus really is. You know Jeremiah 29 verse 13? You shall search me. And you shall find me when you search me with all your heart. Now, these guys could have said there, hey, wait a minute. But there's nothing here. Why don't we just go back? Why don't we just turn around and go back home? I, you know, we were wrong. No, they continued searching. God says, if you really search for me, you will find me. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you pray and nothing happens. Have you ever prayed and you feel like God doesn't listen to you? Like he doesn't answer you? You feel invisible to God? <laughs> it happens. Or, or, or you read the Bible and I didn't get anything out of this. Don't stop there. You're just in Jerusalem. You need to get to Bethlehem. Are you with me? You're in Jerusalem. The star brought you to Jerusalem. Now keep going. You got to get to Bethlehem. That's where Jesus is. You're, you're, you're praying and, and you don't feel anything. You're praying and you don't see any answers. Keep praying. There is Bethlehem ahead of you. Don't stay in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, there's coldness. In Jerusalem, there's silence. In Jerusalem, nobody ex is excited about God. In Jerusalem, Jesus isn't there. You got to go to Bethlehem. That's where he is. But to go to Bethlehem, you got to keep on going. You shall seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. So they, they kept on going. They kept on going to Bethlehem. And the Bible says that when they got there, they found Jesus. I want to say to the young people here today, you're making plans for your future. You're making plans for your future. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know where you're going to go. But you got to start something anyways. you got to try something anyways. I was, I was listening to a, um, a documentary, an interview some time ago of two pastors. And one of the pastors said, he says, hey, um, my daughter, or my son, I don't remember right now, he says, um, they, they were going to go away to study. They were going to go to college to study. And, and um, the daughter or the son comes to him and says, Hey, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I, don't, I, I feel uncertainty. He says, Why? She says, 
Well, because I'm not sure if what I'm going to study is really the thing. I don't know if that's really the thing for my life. And he said to, 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 to his daughter, I think it was his daughter, he says, don't worry about it. If what you're going to study is not the thing, then it's the thing that will take you to the thing that will take you to the thing. Are you with me? Some people are afraid to start a project. You, you feel like there's something God is asking you to do, or you feel like there's something that you should do. But then you're like, what if, not, what if it's not the thing? Well, well still do it. It's the thing that, that somebody's going to see you doing, that's, that they're going to say, hey, that's interesting. Why don't you try it this way? Or why don't you try it that way? Or why don't you come to work for me? Or, or why don't you do this or that related to the thing that you started to do? I thought I used to sing. I thought I could sing a couple of years ago, right? Like somebody, I, I thought I could sing. You want, you want me to tell you how I thought that, Robert? I was, I was in a church playing the piano, and I can't play piano really. I really don't play piano. I just play around with it. And I was singing. And somebody heard me and said, hey, you could sing good. And I believed it. <laughs> I believed it. And, um, and then I, I started singing with two other persons, and we actually formed a little band. I could play guitar, and, uh, and, and we went around churches singing just because I, I, I was singing one day, and somebody thought I could sing, so that led me to another singing, and that led me to something else, and, 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 and now I'm a, this huge superstar that sings all over the world <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> You do not know that whatever it is you're starting to do may lead you to something else. I'm saying to the young people, don't be afraid to start something. Don't be afraid to come up here and sing. Somebody's going to hear you singing. and they're, they're going to love your singing. And who knows where that's going to take you. This is probably a terrible example, but do you know that Whitney Houston actually started singing in a choir in a church? And you know where her path led her. I mean, that could have ended different, but you know how, how it did. What I'm saying is, I'm just using an illustration to say to you that whatever it is you, your mind leads you, where your heart leads you, where God leads you, go ahead and do it. Because it may not be Bethlehem, but if you get to Jerusalem, you get to Bethlehem. Amen, somebody? God is taking you somewhere. So don't be discouraged when you get to Jerusalem and nothing's happening. Some, some students, one of the biggest problems today in society is that, that the young people are going to college and they end up in college, finish college, and guess what? What? No job. So they're like, I wasted all this time, all this money, and so a lot of people are saying to them today, hey, don't study. Be like me. I got rich and I didn't have to study. And a lot of people actually believe it, and it works. Sometimes it works. For some people, it does. What I'm saying is don't be discouraged if you finish college and, there's, and you don't have a job. That's just Jerusalem. Keep going. You're going to find Bethlehem. So, so God will sometimes lead you to a path, and that path is simply a stage in your life, a place in your life. He's taking you somewhere. You're going somewhere. Don't stop there. Don't give up. Don't go back home. Don't say, this doesn't work. Just stay there. Keep searching. Keep working. God has a plan for your life. When, when, when the wise men got to Jerusalem, there was nothing there, but God had special plans for them. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, and they're plans for good and not for evil, to give you a peace. And a hope, or in, and, and our translation says, to give you the desired ending. God has plans for your life, but those plans, he, he doesn't give them to you all at once. Sometimes we would take it for granted. 
So a lot of times he takes us into these little corners in life and, and you'd get discouraged because of where you are. Don't get discouraged. Keep going. At least get to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, God is going to tell you what's the next step to make in your life. I'm saying there are people here today that have been coming to church time and time again. They've been, they've been listening to the messages. They've been enjoying the singing. They've been praying. But you have not made a step to give your life to Jesus yet. You're still in Jerusalem. Somebody went quiet on me there. You're still in Jerusalem. You need to keep going. You need to make that step. Give your life to Jesus. Be baptized. Wash your sins away. Start afresh. Start all over. Be a newborn baby in Christ. Don't stay in Jerusalem. If you stay in Jerusalem, you will not meet the Savior. You know, I was reading in this book that I mentioned, The Desire of Ages, when these three wise men got and saw Jesus, when they got there, they actually surrendered their lives to Jesus, to that baby. You, you remember the story of, of the centurion in the Bible? Remember that story? The centurion, his, 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 his servant was sick and dying. And people came to Jesus and says, Jesus, you need to go and heal this guy's servant because he's done a lot of good things for you. And Jesus said, fine, I'll go. And when he was on his way to, to the centurion's house, someone told the centurion, hey, Jesus is coming here. He got up fast and he went to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, you can't come to my house. I am not worthy for you to come into my house. I tell my soldiers what to do. If I tell them to stand, they stand. I tell them to get down, they get down. But I can't tell you what to do. Please, Jesus, don't go to my house. I'm not worthy. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. You know what Jesus said about this guy? He says, I have not found such great faith in all Israel. What Jesus was saying to, to the, this centurion was not a Jew. He was not an Israelite. He was a Roman soldier. Jesus was saying to him, hey, you have more faith than my church people. You have more faith than the people that come to church Sabbath after Sabbath and listen to message and go back home. You got more faith than them. It's the same thing with these wise men. He's, you know, these men were humble enough to go and look at a baby and worship him while the people of God didn't even want to hear about it. But they had to follow the star. I don't know what your star is today, my friend. I don't know what it is. The star for these guys was just an outward thing. The Holy Spirit was inside of them telling them, this is it. The Holy Spirit was moving in their hearts saying, hey, follow the star. Hey, keep going. Hey, don't give up. Hey, you got to keep going. The Holy Spirit tells you, you can feel it. You know what you should do. But the star becomes something in your life that God uses to guide you. For some people, it may be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a, a friend. For some people, it could be a neighbor. You watch that neighbor. Hey, that neighbor is just, just such a nice person. That neighbor is so excited. That neighbor, you know, I want to be like them. For, for some people, it could be just a word in the Bible. Like God, you know, you, you wake up one day and, hey, I don't know. I have this verse over and over and over in my head. It just keeps hanging in my head, um, you know, Jesus said, come unto me all you who are laboring heavy laden and I will give you rest. And, and, and that may be your star. Your star may be the fact that you keep coming to Henderson Church every single weekend. That could be your star. But the star will only guide you where you allow it to take you. If you want to stay in Jerusalem, then you'll stay there. Apparently, this star disappeared when they got to Jerusalem. So there was no more star when they were in the temple. It was only until they got up and got out of the temple and they continued their journey that the star continued to shine in their way. What is your star? Who is your star? Where is your star taking you? Or have you stopped following the star? Did you say, hey star, I'm good here? This is good enough for me. I'm in Jerusalem. I'm in the temple. I'm with a bunch of people that believe in Jesus. We're all good believers. Leave me here. Is that good enough for you? 
Some young people are saying, well, you know, my parents are Christians, so that's good enough for me. I was born and raised in church. That's good enough for me. That's not good enough for you, my friend. You will not be saved by the faith of your parents. You will not be saved because of your parents' belief. You will be saved by your decision in giving your life to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how good your parents are, how many prayers they pray, and even if they make it to heaven, it's your choice. You must make heaven on your own. You cannot stay in Jerusalem. Jerusalem for you is living in a nice Adventist Christian atmosphere in your house. That's Jerusalem. You need to get to Bethlehem where Jesus is. Your boyfriend is Christian, is Adventist. Follow the star. God has placed that star in your life to follow. Don't, don't make it become just an ordinary star and you say, hey, this is good enough for me. No, go to Bethlehem. Finish the work, finish the walk, finish the journey. Make it to the end where Jesus is interceding for you. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this message today. I don't know why. I, 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 I think I'm going to give an opportunity to somebody who's been stuck in Jerusalem. I need to make it to Bethlehem. And somebody's saying, what do you mean? What do you mean? Rex, you want to play some music for us? What do you mean? The Holy Spirit interprets to you what I mean. You're stuck there. There are, there are members that have been stuck in Jerusalem here for years and years and years and years, and you become a dead bone. Dead. Dry. You need to get up and go to Bethlehem. You're saying, but what does that mean? That means get up and, 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 and recommit your life to the Lord. If it means rebaptism, it means rebaptism. Although some people don't believe in it, do it. Don't worry what people think or believe. If the Holy Spirit is calling you, then do it. Go to Bethlehem. Don't stay in Jerusalem. Move on. Keep going. There's somebody here that's been coming to church for years, and you're stuck. You're stuck in Jerusalem. No, let's go. Move on. We're having a beautiful baptism next weekend. It's, it's, it's a young person born and raised in the Adventist church and decided to give his life to Jesus. It's amazing. Amazing. And I wonder if there is, there is someone here else today, someone else today, today here, that would like to join this person for next weekend, Sabbath 22nd. And I'm, 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 I'm inviting somebody here today who has, is stuck in Jerusalem. You know all the teachings of the church. You know what God has been telling you. You know that He's been calling you. But you've just been putting it off, procrastinating time and time again. And today the Holy Spirit is calling you. What will you say? Is there someone here today that would like to join our baptismal candidate for next weekend? I want to give you that opportunity here today. Where's Brittany? I want us to sing together just as I am, without one plea. But that thy word was shed for me, and as thou bids me come to me, come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Can you put this on the screen for us? Just as I am. I want you to sing together with me. There is someone here today that has been stuck in Jerusalem. Believe me, I didn't have a plan to call today, but I believe that the Holy Spirit is calling somebody's life. And I want to give you that opportunity. If there is somebody today who the Holy Spirit is moving upon, I'm going to invite you to stand if you would like to be baptized next weekend. Let us sing together with Brittany, just as I am, without one plea. Can you put it a little lower? Let's sing together. Just as I am without 
is one person, at least one person today, that God's Holy Spirit has been moving upon. Sing with Britney Church. While we sing, I'm going to give you the opportunity. There is somebody here. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Jesus said, if anybody confess me before men, I will also confess them before my Father who is in heaven and before the angels of heaven. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I, this is your opportunity. This is your time. This is your break. There is, there is many, but somebody here today must break through the fears. Somebody here today must break through that struggle and get up and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Somebody is saying, but that's embarrassing. There's nothing embarrassing when you're doing something for Jesus. It's worth it. If it is, it's worth it. I can tell you. People do really crazy things for no reason at all. I mean, if you have social media, the greatest viral things are dumb things most of the time. But this is for your soul salvation, for God. And I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. We're going to sing one last stanza while you think and make your decision. Just as I am, and I'm waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. Sing with Brittany. Just as I Where am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood It's you and Jesus. Choice, your decision. God, I come. Where are you? I come. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There's somebody else here. Don't stay stuck in Jerusalem. You've been there too long. Go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem. There's somebody else there somebody else there don't stay stuck don't stay there Jesus is calling you the Holy Spirit he says if you hear my voice do not harden your heart today is the day of salvation there's somebody else there who's struggling you God has been calling you you didn't you didn't expect this day you're like ah, this I'm not ready for this of course you're not but but Jesus is calling you Jesus is calling you. Today is that day. It's today. It's today. We're closing now. We're closing. But I know that the Spirit is, is moving. Jesus says, I am at the door and I knock. I knock. I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'm going to come in. And we're going to have a party together. Jesus don't care to sit at the table with He invite everybody and only you show up. It's fine. The Bible says there is joy in heaven for one, one sinner who comes to Him. Amen, somebody? There is somebody else that's going to join us today. There's somebody else. As we close, and there's somebody else who the Holy Spirit is moving upon, 
We're closing off this year. In two weeks' time, this year is done. Millions of people did not make it to the end of 2018. But here you are, making plans for 2019. While another couple of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands are not going to make it to 2019. You don't know. Your best assurance is that your soul is right with the Lord. To know that I have made things right with my Lord. Doesn't matter what happens next. Is there one more person that want to give their life to Jesus Christ today? Is there one more person who want to stand today for Jesus? I'm going to invite my baptism for next, next weekend. If you want to come up to my friend, where are you? Friend Ryan. Hey Amen, somebody? An amazing young man has decided to give his life to Jesus Christ through baptism. Isn't that amazing? Why are you so quiet? Does somebody else like to join these guys here? Another young person? Another teenager? An adult? Why not? Why wait? Another five years? Why? The longer you wait, the harder the decision becomes. The harder it gets. I've seen parents stop their children from taking a decision and many years after crying, God, forgive me for not allowing my son, my daughter to give their heart to Jesus. Terrible mistake. Is there somebody else here today who want to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ? My young people here, if you haven't done it, this could be a good opportunity for you to join this very small selected group. This could be your opportunity. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. You don't have to wait. This could be your time. As we close now, as we close, I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Get out of Jerusalem. Go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem. That's where Jesus is. I want to pray for these persons here. Oh, we got Ab um, Abigail, right? Our little singer. I'm going to pray for this group of young people here and I'm going to pray for those who are still there that the Spirit of God is calling to make a decision for Jesus. Let us pray. Father, thank you because the Spirit of God the Spirit of God is a star that leads us to Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for these brave young persons here today who have made a decision to give their life to Jesus Christ through baptism. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit may continue to move in the heart of your people. For those who have been stuck in Jerusalem, give them the power the strength to find that star again that leads them to Jesus. Bless your people today and guide us for we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.